So let's talk about what we want to achieve with this notebook and what our problem is, because we first need to understand this to understand what kind of data we need in our model. So what we want to do is to predict how much money or the average money that people spend for a cab ride in New York, in a certain region of New York, in a given hour of a day of a month. So, but the way that we have the data right now is that every row right now is one transaction and there are different rows for the same hour of the same region. So we have to aggregate this data and bring it together so that it gives us, you know, for every region and every hour of every different day, we have only one line and the total amount there is the mean or the average of all the transactions that happened in that certain day, in that certain hour, in that certain region. So how we're going to do this is basically we're going to look at our numerical values and we're going to take the average of them based on the location, the transaction date. Also month and day and hour, but like date also encompasses it. So uh, we don't need to set it separately. So that's what I'm doing here actually. So our categorical values are the location ID, the transaction date, which also includes month, day, and hour. So I include all of them here just so that we can see all the categorical values or categorical features, but they are basically these three and this one is the same thing. And then we have our numerical columns or numerical features, and that's trip distance and the total amount that we're trying to predict. Um, so what I'm going to do here, let's just take this. I'm only going to include these ones in my new data frame. And that is what I have. So what did I miss here? I left behind um, passenger count. And I think that's it. Or I also left behind payment type, uh, I think, and also drop off location and rate code ID. So there are a couple of things that I left behind, but that is because I do not think that they will be useful for me in my model. So I cannot use them as input because, you know, the rate code, how someone paid cars or cash or how, which region they were in uh, during their taxi trip is not, I don't think of them as things that are going to improve my model. So I'm leaving them behind. The, as I told you before, the reason that I kept them so far was because I thought they could help me during the data preparation and data cleaning uh, process. And they were helpful actually when, for example, when we were seeing why they were negative results, they were very helpful, but from now on, I'm not going to need them. So I'm only writing here the ones that I need. And this is the very cute little tiny data frame that I have now. It's very understandable. It's very small. <laughs> And as you can see, I also left behind the, where is it? The pickup date time, because as I said, it's very hard to work with this. I have, I got everything that I want from it. I got the year, I got the month, I got the um, day and hour. I don't really want minutes and second information. That's too much granularity, but yeah, I got everything that I want. And this is the data frame that I'm going to go forward with. So how do I aggregate? What I mean by aggregating? It's basically this. So in this data frame, this is not the only row where I have the pickup location ID 151 on this date. There are an on this uh, hour. So there are other uh, rows where I have this, but with a different trip distance and different total amount. And what I want to do is say to this, um, data frame, okay, bring everything together that has the same location ID and the same date and get the average of total amount and trip distance. And this is exactly what we're doing here. And in a second, we will see how it looks. There you go. So now for every location ID on a date, on a specific date, an hour, I have only one of this. I don't have anywhere else where you can find the same one. So as you can see, it's like location ID one, 1st of January, transaction hour, 2 a.m. It's this. And then for the same place, same date, transaction hour, 5 a.m., I have this information. Uh, the count of transactions here is just, I use it just to see, you know, how many transactions happened here because 
if it's just one transaction, it means that only one transaction happened and it's twenty one dollars. But then if, if it's four transactions, you know, this this is just the average of those four transactions. Uh, I first thought about this as like something that I can use to filter the data more. But I think it only fair. It's only fair to keep the count of trans, um, you know, the ones that only have one transaction in a certain region on a certain hour. But I will keep this, something, this in mind as something that I can use to filter the data more if I want to. If I want to maybe uh, see if this will filtering it this way will increase my performance. Uh, yeah. So. Let's quickly just look at trip distance and total amount. I want to see how they look. So yeah, I mean, we have a lot of trip distances that are very, very small, but I, these might even be zero. But I also doubt that the trip distance is not very correct. Uh, maybe it wasn't really correctly uh, collected, but we will see about it soon also. And this is the total amount. It looks, looks all right to me. Doesn't look like there are big problems. Uh, yeah. And with this, we can actually go on our next challenge. I'm very excited for this. I hope you're excited too. Uh, I would really encourage you to give it a shot. Try to make your first model and then, yeah, and then come back and watch how I did it. And I hope you'll learn something.